It's common knowledge that an increase in stress can be harmful to your health. But how exactly does this happen? Too much stress causes increased cortisol levels, and high cortisol levels play a key role in harming health. Among other things, high cortisol can cause an increase in cravings, excess belly fat, and slower metabolism. In this clip, Dr. Ruth Bozinski interviews Dr. Sean Talbot about cortisol and the toll it can take, and how we, as health and mental health practitioners, can help. I'm Dr. Ruth Bozinski, a licensed psychologist in Connecticut and president of the National Institute for the Clinical Application of Behavioral Medicine. The first thing I want to do is welcome our guest who is Dr. Sean Talbot. He is, uh, has a Ph.D. from Rutgers in nutritional biochemistry and is an expert in sport medicine and nutrition and the physiology of weight gain and, and loss. He's the author of The Cortisol Connection, Why Stress Makes You Fat and Ruins Your Health. Let's start with weight gain. Why does cortisol lead to weight gain? There are two very, very powerful effects that cortisol has in the body with respect to weight gain. The first is in the brain. Cortisol is a potent appetite signal, and it's, um, it, it really signals a very specific kind of appetite. It tells us that we're hungry, but it really tells us that we're hungry for high-calorie, high-carbohydrate foods. And it, it makes perfect sense if you think of it from, from evolutionary perspective, where if you're thinking back to the caveman days and we had to stress, we'd mount a fight-or-flight response, and that would cause us to expend lots of calories, either fighting off the saber-toothed tiger or running away from it. And so cortisol is really telling us, okay, you survived that stress, now let's refuel from all that exercise you must have done. And mm -hmm. if we're sitting in a traffic jam, you know, we didn't do any uh, exercise, we didn't expend any right. calories, but we had the very same stress response. So that's the first piece of it. Cortisol is telling our brain that we're hungry. Secondly, cortisol is also telling our, our fat cells, and specifically the fat cells in our belly region, our abdominal fat cells, to store as much fat as possible. And that probably also is an evolutionary advantage that if, you have, if you're under stress, you have access to those calories, you want to store them someplace close to the rest of your, your vital organs. So we store them in the belly region versus you know, the legs or someplace else. So stress, cortisol, it makes you hungry, makes you store weight in the midsection. Let's talk about cortisol's effect on metabolic balance and metabolic function. How does cortisol affect that? Se several ways, some directly, some indirectly. So what, what, while cortisol is, is having you gain weight in the midsection, it's actually also ha having an effect on your overall metabolic rate. So by, by that, I mean the total number of calories that your body will burn in a given day. So cortisol is telling you to refuel, eat more. It's telling your body to store more of that energy. And at the same time, it's dialing down your body's normal calorie burn. Uh, one of the ways that cortisol accomplishes that is by breaking down muscle tissue slowly. So when we see people who have chronic cortisol overexposure, they're gaining belly fat, but they're losing muscle mass throughout their body. Um, and you know, so they, you know, they lose muscle tone. If it's an athlete, their, their, their performance is dropping. If it's a dieter, they're hitting a weight loss plateau because their muscle actually is, is the source of, of the majority of their calorie burns. And we see that, we see that in the laboratory setting. You know, if we measure people who are under chronic stress, they have a very, very low metabolic rate. So is anyone in behavioral medicine measuring cortisol or HSD in relation to their treatments? Yeah, lot, lots of people are starting to do that. And it's, and it's wonderful because, you know, it's kind of funny. I have a, I have a colleague um, at University of California, San Francisco, who is a psychologist. So, you know, her training is a lot different than my training. And she had an idea um, se several years ago. This is probably six or seven years ago now when she did her first study. Um, Alyssa Apple um, decided, hey, if we put people on a, on a cognitive behavioral stress management type of program, we ought to be able to lower their cortisol levels. And that lower cortisol level will have an effect on reducing belly fat. And so... It makes good sense, I guess, but you know, basically it was, let's see if we can put these people on a, on a stress management program, reduce their stress, and reduce their belly fat. And when you say it like that, you kind of go, no way, this isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. And when, when, when she carried out that first study, that's exactly what happened. 
people on a stress management program reduce their cortisol exposure, and without any changes in diet and exercise, that change in cortisol exposure reduced their belly fat by about 2.5%, 3%, which doesn't sound like a big number, but, but in that population of people, it was the difference between them being on high blood pressure medication or diabetes medication or not. So just the fact that you can use something like, like stress management therapy or cognitive therapy of some sort to have a metabolic effect, a hormonal effect in the body, and then that delivers a health effect, a very meaningful health effect, that's huge. And that type of work has now been repeated over and over again by other groups. So it's very exciting time. There's a lot more to learn. For more information, visit our blog www.nicabm.com slash NICABM blog or attend a free teleseminar at www.nicabm.com slash teleseminar slash 2009. This December, NICABM will host its 21st International Psychology of Health, Immunity, and Disease Conference on the beautiful Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. Hundreds of practitioners will be coming from all over the United States and many parts of the world. Among the nearly 50 speakers, Dr. Talbot will be giving a master class on the cortisol connection, why stress makes you fat and ruins your health. There will be several other sessions on related topics, including thyroid disorders, a holistic approach, a comprehensive program to prevent and reduce inflammation, emotions and chronic musculoskeletal pain, and vitamin D3, key to a healthy brain and mind. To see more information about the December conference and to sign up to attend and receive CEU credits, please visit www.nicabm.com slash DECCON09.